Ladies and gentlemen, meet the boss. So, this is my Bridgeport Boss milling machine. I've been keeping this under wraps for a while. Been doing a lot of work to it. I decided that I, well, first of all, I love computers. I love electronics. And apparently I love machining. So, uh, I wanted to do something above and beyond manual machining not saying that I don't want to do manual machining but I also wanted to get my feet wet into this and if you've been watching my videos uh, you know I've purchased the 3d printer I purchased the uh, the X carve so I've, I've gotten myself familiar with how all this stuff works uh, I purchased a uh, Sureline CNC mill and a CNC lathe and I've been playing with those and I thought it was time to move up to uh, a bridge port. So, um, believe it or not, I found this bridge port on uh, Facebook Marketplace. And the gentleman was from Pennsylvania. He was even nice enough to have it delivered to me. So, I kind of feel like I saved it. Um, I didn't get it really super dirt cheap. But the machine itself, um, the the... Uh, hardware or the iron is in really good condition. The scrapings on the waves are impeccable. Um, it's very tight. There's no slop in it anywhere. It's the three axis machine. So the quill is also, the Z axis is also uh, motorized. But it had two giant, I'm talking, I, I can't even describe it. They were two giant boxes of electronics. One on the side, one on the back. And uh, although it's possible the machine still might have, I might have gotten it to run the way it was, uh, I just wasn't interested. So I ripped those boxes off. I gutted them. That took an awful lot of time. Um, after I gutted the boxes, I proceeded to get rid of the old uh, Textron stepper motors. It had stepper motors on it. And what I'm in the process now is I'm in the process of cleaning the machine as best as I can. I would absolutely love to take it apart and uh, paint it and, you know, make it fancy. I just don't have room in the shop for a project like that. Um, you know, you, you take one of these machines apart and, and you, you have, it takes up 10 times the amount of space it did when it's in one piece. So that along with all the other projects I have going on. And I'm only kind of doing this in my spare time because I do have a full-time job. Uh, it's just not feasible for me to do it now. I seem to bite off more than I could chew, but in this instance, I'm, I'm just not doing it. So uh, what have I done to it so far? Um, I've gutted the electronics. I've gotten rid of the stepper motors. I've cleaned it about maybe 70% of how clean I want it to be. Um, I've rebuilt the... Uh, automatic oiler it has a uh, electric oiler that turns on when you turn the controls on I've purchased a, a what is it a centroid a CNC operating system um, it's going to use Windows 10 and it's going to use a, a touchscreen to uh, to make it work make it function and I'll also have a pendant with it uh, I've purchased DMM servo motors, uh, super high-end servo motors, um, much smaller, much more powerful for their size, for what they used to have when this machine was made, probably in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, maybe even the mid-90s, I'm not sure. Um, and so at this point now, uh, I, I want to start a series showing you guys my progress um, on you know steps I'm going to take to make this function uh, if you see something off to your right just kind of disregard that for now that's uh, that's in a next type of uh, video but uh, had it working from top to bottom it uh, the spindle is controlled pneumatically I'm gonna see if I could get that to operate via CNC or via the centroid controls uh, I will probably have to put some kind of a, um, a RPM, a tachometer on the spindle somehow so I can measure it to get feedback to the unit. It, uh, it also has a, uh, a brake 
that's controlled pneumatically. Uh, the quill is controlled uh, with a servo motor, as you can see towards the top on the left. Um, there are some control boxes, which I'm going to try to incorporate into it uh, for not so much a touch screen control, but also to incorporate, you know, like a, a, a hard stop button, emergency stop, uh, get some bells, lights, and whistles going on. Uh, as you look down, uh, it, it doesn't have a super large 48 inch table. I'm not exactly sure what that table is, maybe 40, 42, but it's a nice big table. I like to also build a uh, some kind of a, a table enclosure to keep the chips from flying because I've been watching CNC videos for a while now. Uh, boy, they can throw some chips. I'm just going to readjust the camera a bit down so you can see where I'm at. Okay. Uh, you can see in the front there, I've, I've removed the uh, Y stepper motor and gutted out that box. Um, I have to make adapter plates. I'm going from NEMA 42 uh, steppers to NEMA 34 servos. Uh, I believe they have 750 inch ounces of torque. Uh, off to your right, you'll see uh, that's where the, the X um, servo will go. It's got your typical uh, knee crank, which, um, you know, obviously I don't think we're, you know, we'll, we'll only need it for setup. We won't need it for normal usage. Uh, and it also has, let me just move you back up a little bit. It also has an Ericsson 30 taper. It's a quick change taper. So that should be quite good. Um, and uh, I'll need Obviously, I'll need to start collecting some of that stuff. But uh, this is just the uh, introduction video, so you guys could see what I have going on. Um, so my next couple videos, uh, I'm gonna put out a video where I rebuild the uh, Bijour oiler. Uh, it was it was like gunked up like nobody's business. I took it all apart. I cleaned it. I ordered new filters. I replaced the filters. Um, I tested it. I did that video already. I'm in the process now of making uh, adapter plates for the for the servos. Um, so you'll be seeing a, a a video with that with that process, and uh, and also uh, I'll be making adapters for the actual um, uh, the servo motors for the uh, the shafts. The shafts are a little bit different, so I, I'm making adapters for those. Uh, and you'll you'll also be seeing um, videos. Uh, I ordered a cabinet finally for it for the electronics, so you'll see me actually hooking up the electronics. Uh, the uh, servos are 220 volt, um, so we're going to keep that. Uh, it's this this machine has a two horsepower motor. Uh, I think we're going to keep that at some future time. Uh, I may try to get rid of the variable speed head. Uh, I can control the motor from a, a VFD. I don't need a VFD at this particular point, but uh, I can control the motor and I can probably change the pulley system on the top uh, to a fixed sheave system and uh, increase, balance the motor, balance everything and increase the, uh, the RPM of the spindle. Uh, for for better better production, you know, um, more modern machines have a, a higher RPM than these bridge ports. But uh, granted, uh, it probably would have been easier for me to buy a, uh, a Tormac and take a loan out, or uh, maybe a, a mini mill, mini mini Haas. Uh, but I love these bridge ports, and uh, I hate to see this old iron go. And and again. For the moment, this is just a hobby. It's not a, uh, it's not a way of life for me. So um, I didn't want to dive in that that super deep, um, because it seems like when I take a hobby and turn it into a business, uh, the fun kind of leaves this leaves it pretty pretty quickly. So uh, please uh, stay tuned, stick around. Um, I'll, I'll definitely uh, be doing these videos soon because I've, I've already got two or three of them in the can. I just have to uh, do a little production and, and release them. And um, 
and uh, I, I'm very excited. I think this is going to be something great for the workshop. Uh, this first machine, the first CNC, obviously I want to get it running because uh, I did tell you not to look over to the uh, to the right, but there's there's also a um, I might as well give it away because you guys seen it. That's that's also a Series One uh, CNC with ball screws that I purchased. Someone had converted it back to a manual mill, uh, but I was able to find it. So um, that will be the next conversion back to CNC. Uh, and fortunately, uh, I was able to get most of the bracketry from the guy for the servos. And I was actually able to get an entire head without the motor, without the, uh, the aluminum top, from the, from the aluminum top down, which was also identical to this head with the with the power uh, Z spindle so uh, the machines got a lot of potential there we have two machines here that, that have potential and uh, and then one more little hint I'll give you uh, there is something else that's lurking in the shop and and I'll say one thing well only one thing about it it's uh, Heidenheim so we'll let your your uh, imagination wander and we'll we'll give that uh, a couple more hints out as we progress in these videos okay guys thanks for watching